All right, ladies and gentlemen of the YouTube citizens, y'all know who this is. This is a boy Troy in front of today's day is Tuesday, September the 26th. There we go, much better, much better. So what's going on is this, as you can see over there, it's Growler Spotlight Hours. So I'm not out trying to get a shiny Growler because I got a bunch of those already, but there's two reasons why I'm out. One, the bonus, which is Stardust. So that's major important right there, and I need the Stardust. And two, remember, by the time this video drops, the Out to Walk event, whatever it's called, is going to be out, and the main Pokemon there would be Hsui and Growlithe, and to a degree Growlithe. But more importantly than that, a part of that event, I think it would be this coming weekend, there's going to be a showcase featuring Growlithe, if memory says it correctly, regular and Hsui, if memory says it correctly. So I can get some, you know, extra double XLs Growlithe while I'm out here. So that's what's going on right now. Now, that is not the main purpose of this video, though. The main purpose of this video is to basically give my review on the places that I've been to, the place that I stay, a proper review when I was in Japan. So yes, I know I kind of did something like that, but I didn't do the Kyoto portion because I was saving that as a surprise for much later. And then also, I also want to talk about some of the restaurants that I've been as well. So in case you guys want to go to Japan and you're trying to hit up either Osaka or Kyoto or Tokyo for that matter, your boy got you covered once again. So before we get on with this, though, there's one more growl that I want to catch, and then there's something else that I need to take care of as well, and I'll show you what that is in a short second. Now, I'm in the car because it was raining, but apparently it stopped. So although I think it's trying to rain again, I don't know. But also, I need to charge my screen projector, aka my old phone. So so I can see how the camera angles look and stuff like that. And my, that battery was at zero. So that's what's going on there. Now let's swing on over here. We got a Payday and Adventure Part 3 of 5 completed. So we're going to claim 30 raspberries, 15 pineapps, 25 Pokeballs, 1,000 XP, and 3,000 Duds, which I think should be more since I got a, okay, Star Piece running, but apparently that's not the case. And then we're going to claim this reward. We're going to get 900 XP and an encounter with LeChunk. That is not shiny. Boo, his, his. Uh oh, I already see what's next. I already see what's next. Rillo, get away from me. We got to explore 30 kilometers, catch 400 Pokemon, earn 40 candies walking with your buddy, evolve a Crocodile, and visit Pokestops on 14 different days. So this is going to take 14 days to complete, unfortunately. So. There's that, and there's a Growlithe right here. So at least this would tell me whether or not I'm catching the Growlithe or not since I'm fast catching them for the dust. So let's not, there's under, so there's, there's just spawn. Let's not waste any time. Let's go ahead and keep things moving. So yeah, let's go. So to get things started, so in case y'all haven't heard, I spent the first three days, four days actually, in Kyoto. So. Before I get on with that, I just want to remind y'all, y'all probably wondering why you kept that a secret. Well, because I was out there filming a documentary for my upcoming beat album, the Kyoto Hour Volume 10, which is coming out Friday, November the 24th. There's going to be three versions of it. We got the standard edition that will be available at all major online music retailers and also on Spotify and at truefront.bandcamp.com. That one will cost $2. There's the deluxe edition, which will feature the album and some f bonus clips, bonus footage, and some bonus pictures, and a documentary about the Kyoto Hour series that was shot from Kyoto. So that's why I was in Kyoto to shoot the footage for the documentary. So there's that, and that would be on the deluxe edition, and that will cost eight bucks, and that will only be available at trueandfriendly.bandcamp.com. And then there's the big boy, the ultimate edition, where you would get the album volume 10 you'll get the documentary with the clips and the photos and you'll get every single kyoto hour album from volume one all the way up to volume nine so all of that will be included in the ultimate edition that will cost 15 dollars, and that will only be available at trueandfriendly.bandcamp.com so there you go that's why i was in kyoto and that's why i kept it a secret and i call all the growl ups here as i was talking about it so there's not much to record there so basically I stayed at the Harton Hotel Kyoto, and this was a really good hotel. This was, if I had to think about all the hotels that I stayed at while I was in Kyoto, I mean, while I was in Japan, throughout my lifetime, so we're going back to 2019 as well, I have to say, this one would be number two, like the best hotel that I stayed at 
when I was in Japan. So while the rooms were small, I mean, Japan likes stuff to be small, I guess. They did have that buffet style breakfast, which was really, really cool. So I got that, you know, for free with my stay. So, but it wasn't free, it was included. Let's say that it was included. But the selection, they had a lot to choose. And you know, it was some good food, it was some good food. So the, the hotel was also located south of the Kyoto Imperial Palace, which you could get in for free. It was also north of the Kyoto Tower, the Pokemon Center, and a Happy Pancake, which I'll talk about, you know, in a second. Also nearby was the Nishiki Market, which is really cool, and Gion, which is a major street. And then also there was a shopping area that was a part of Gion. So I was over there as well. Now, in terms of food, so but before I get to that, so basically this hotel was pretty much, I wouldn't necessarily call it the heart of Kyoto or where it was located to be the heart of Kyoto because there was some place that had to go for the east and some place that had to go for the rest, you know, for the documentary things, that nature. But that is a good spot, a very good hotel to stay at if you're going to Kyoto and, you know, you're trying to do different stuff, wherever the case may be. And not to mention, it is close to a train station or, you know, the, you know, the train station. So very good spot. Very good spot, but I do say so myself. I highly recommend staying at the hotel if you're going to Kyoto. Now, in terms of the food, so my first night, there was a ramen spot that I went to that night nearby the hotel. I don't remember the name of it because it would have been like finding a needle in a haystack to try and find that restaurant. The ramen there was okay. Would I recommend it? No, I would not recommend it, but it wasn't bad or anything like that. It's, you know, it wasn't exactly... It did left a mark where I would say, ooh, if I'm in Kyoto, I got to go there. Like, that wasn't the case here. So, you know, I, I would, you know, it, it's not ideal to go there. I don't remember the name of it. But I know if I were to walk over there, I would probably find it. And I would probably say, yeah, this would be like a last option. If you really want ramen in that area. That would be like a last option. So, there's that. So, that was my first day in Kyoto. My second day in Kyoto, I just got food from 7-Eleven, which I thought, oh, I was trying to be cheap, but eh, I could have just went to a restaurant that night. Now, the third night in Kyoto, I did go to a Happy Pancake, and while the pancakes was good, you know, the service was good, it was a smaller establishment than the one we went to in 2019, which is closed down, by the way, which sucked. But the one back in 2019, I felt like that the food there was really good. So when I went to the Happy Pancake here in Kyoto, it didn't have that magic like it did. And uh, I think we was at Shinjutsu, and uh, you know, back in 2019, it didn't have that same magic. But it was still good there. It was still good, nevertheless. So if you're going to Japan and you're only going to Kyoto, I were, and you want to go out to experience a Happy Pancake for yourself, that's not a bad one to try. Although I would probably say, yo, try one in Tokyo or try a different one. But the one in Kyoto that I went to that was near the Pokemon Center, it's not bad. It's not bad at all. So that's pretty much it for Kyoto. So now we're going to keep on driving, look for some more growlers, because those are spawning right here. And I'm going to talk about my time in Osaka. So yeah, stay tuned. So now we're going to move on to the Osaka experience as I'm catching more of these growlers. I started already, and none of these are shiny, I don't think. But nevertheless, I stayed at this one hotel. So there is a chain of this hotel all throughout Japan. It's not just in Osaka. It's all throughout Japan, Japan rather. But the one that I stayed at, it was the APA Hotel. So there, again, there's a bunch of these in Japan. But it was the APA Hotel, Namba Minami Daikokucho Ekime. That's where I stayed at in Osaka. And... This was the best hotel out of any hotel that I stayed at in Japan, 2023 and even in 2019. Like this hotel was dope. The room was bigger than any hotel that I stayed at. They had storage underneath the bed so you could put your suitcases down there. And the bathroom was pretty cool. Now granted, the Horton Hotel Kyoto had the biggest bathroom that I ever, you know, used in a hotel room or whatever but the apa hotel where i was at in osaka that's the best one without question hands down granted their breakfast selection was bland it's nothing to write home about it's nothing to brag about anything like that especially in comparison to the harton hotel in kyoto that had the best breakfast out of well granted i only did those two breakfasts while i was in japan so 
there's that but this hotel was really really dope nevertheless and it was really close to a train station like you could literally just walk outside and take like three steps and boom you're going down the subway um, route and you're gonna be at the train station so that was pretty cool if I do say so myself as it is windy it stopped raining but it is windy nevertheless now let's talk about the food so my first night there I hit a train of tails because we were all staying around that area and we went to this ramen spot it's called and I probably go butcher this name Mute Pao Ramen. That's what it's called. And even though they didn't have chicken ramen in there, which bummed me out, I will admit. So I'm like, okay, I'll try their pork ramen. Oh my gosh, this ramen was spectacular. I could not believe how great it tasted. It was really, really phenomenal. So not only do I recommend you stay at this hotel, but I recommend you go there and you get their pork ramen. It is phenomenal. Oh my gosh, it's phenomenal. And the crazy thing was, Trainer Tips was telling me that obviously, because he had the same thing that I had, but he was saying like, yo, there's an even better ramen spot. So if y'all watch this video, y'all might know what it is. So I'm like, yo, I want to go there next time. So that's obviously going to be in my bucket list of things to do the next time I go to Japan. So there's that. But this spot, dog, you got to go. If you ain't in the soccer, you gotta go to this spot. Like this spot was amazing as a growler flat for me. Okay, so after that, we, that was Thursday. Friday, it was, you know, it was me. It was a, it was a good number of people at this one. It was me, it was Zoe 2000, it was V, Agent V that is. It was Glitch, it was Step of Anime, it was Allen, and it was Step of Anime's companion. We're gonna call him that, companion. I'm not sure about that. I don't remember their full relationship. And I'm, I'm not gonna get into it. But nevertheless, we left the park where Go Fest of Soccer was, and we went to some restaurant that was inside of the mall slash train station. I don't remember where we were at though, but the selection was okay, and the food there was, it was good though, it was good. But it wasn't exactly, you know, like a mind-blowing experience. So, while I wouldn't necessarily go crazy and say, oh, you gotta go to this restaurant. Like, I wouldn't go that far, but if you are in Osaka, you are at this mall. I don't remember where it was at, I tried to find it. Again, it was like finding needles in a haystack, and you just happen to be at that restaurant, then, oh, okay, that's over there. We can do this raid right now, actually. So, if you just happen to be over there, then, you know, go over there, knock yourself out, try that restaurant, you might like it. All right, so there's one more spot left that we need to talk about, and that's in Tokyo slash Yokohama. So yeah, let's get into it. So we are now gonna talk about the last spot that I stayed at, and that is the Nine Hours Hamama, Hama Matu Show. I think that's how you pronounce it. So this is, I'm not sure if you can even call this a hotel. So this was like one of those establishments where it's like you're staying in a pod. So basically, you recall my first night in Japan when I was at the hotel, when I was at the airport. I stayed in a pod-like setting, but this was really more like a pod right here. So, and I was like, okay, I want to try it out, blah 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 blah, and it was cheap, so I stayed there. And I'll, I'll be honest with you guys. I'll be honest with you guys. So once you get used to how it works, it's decent at best it's decent at best but at the same time i don't care if you're trying to be cheap or whatever the case may be i don't care if that location is close to like for example the tokyo tower i had a brain fart turns of what it's called and it was close to the tokyo tower and it was actually close to the spot where i was at in 2019 when we stayed that one night in tokyo before we left don't 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 stay there don't stay there there's only a few exceptions where you should stay there one Really, there's only one exception for you to stay there. If you're like, have nowhere to stay, and you're close to that area, then yeah, get a room there, you'll be straight. But in terms of like spending your whole trip there, no, don't do that, don't do that, don't do that. The problem is, again, it's a pod, so you're gonna be separated by gender, so you know, the boys have certain floors, the girls have certain floors, and your little room is not totally blocked off because there's gonna be a curtain, that's going to shield you from everybody else. And it's basically a bed. It's basically a bed. There's not enough shelves in there like it was at the airport. The one at the airport was better, in my opinion. True, in terms of your sleeping arrangements, things of that nature. What I will give them credit though is this. They did have lockers for you to put your stuff, to get access to your stuff. Whereas the one at the airport, 
yeah, the, the staff would take your luggage and stuff and put it in the back room, but if you need something out of there or you need to put something in there, you have to constantly tell them, hey, I need to get my bag real quick and blah, blah, blah. Whereas here, you got lockers and then you were straight. And even though the one at the airport did have like a spa setting in there, but the one at this spot, they had showers that separated you from everybody else. So you walk into the room and it was actually a room. It was like, it, there was like one shower inside of a small room that was in the bathroom. So you walked in there and you're gonna be in the changing area where it's just you, it's for you. And you know, you change clothes, you, or you strip or whatever, blah, blah, blah. Then you go into the shower. You take your shower, blah, 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 which is shielded from that room, room. And then you step out, you dry off, you put your clothes on, and then you step out and you're in the rest of the bathroom with the other guys or girls or whatever. So that part wasn't bad. So once you get used to how things work in terms of, you know, staying at that establishment, it's not bad, but at the same time, I would highly advise you to not do it. Unless, again, you need a place to stay for a night, or maybe two, maybe three, and then, yeah, you're straight there. Now, here's another thing about that as well. So, I was there for a week, and the thing about that place was this. Basically, you had to get out of the hotel, like that establishment. At, I think it was at, uh, and of course, they gave me, and I'll talk about the breakfast part in a second, which is funny, but... I need to do this raid, so I'm gonna um, catch all these growlups and then we're gonna jump in this raid real quick. So the one thing about this establishment is this. If you're staying there for, I think for longer than two nights, here's what you have to do. When you, when it turns 10 o'clock, everybody has to get out. Like you can't be asleep, you can't be in the bathroom, you know, you, you can't be in your locker, you have to get out. You have to get out because what happens is they clean the pots, they clean the bathrooms that, you know, there's like, I think 10 floors or whatever. So about two of the floors, they have like resting areas or whatever, actually three of them actually. So I guess they clean those rest. So basically they clean all the floors. So this goes on from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. So in between that time, you're not allowed to go in there. You're not allowed to go to your locker. You're not allowed to do anything in there except chill on the first floor. That's it. That's pretty much it. So there's that. But also what makes this more crazy is this. If you're staying there longer, I think it was for two nights or three nights. I don't remember how long you had to stay there for. But you have to turn in your key. Now, the key is for you to access the elevator, to access your locker, and uh, yeah, and that's it. That's pretty much it. So it was crazy. You had to turn in your key at 10 o'clock and then at two o'clock, they'll give you another key, wherever the case may be. So yeah, it's pretty crazy. It was pretty, pretty crazy. That's if you stay there for longer than like two nights or so. But if you stay there for a night or two nights, you get to keep your key. So that was some pretty crazy stuff if I do say so myself. But uh, yeah, I thought it was like pretty crazy. In terms of the breakfast, here's what they did with the breakfast. So there's the establishment, I think it called, uh, Big Bees, I forgot what it's called. They basically gave you a tag saying, yo, go over there and eat breakfast. And I'm like, okay. So you get free breakfast there, which is decent, but overall it's like, uh, I don't know, I don't know. So again, I would not advise you to stay there. And in terms of what I ate, in terms of dinner, stuff like that, I mostly was being cheap because at that point I had no money at all. And yeah, so I just did like McDonald's and 7-Eleven, stuff like that. And then my last night where I was there, um, I did went into Japan Lover and Mr. Japan Lover and stuff like that. And what ended up happening was we went out to um, a restaurant in Yokohama. I don't remember where we was at, but the food there was not bad, not bad at all. But at the same time, it wasn't anything spectacular that made me go, oh, wow, I need to come back or anything like that. But it wasn't bad. It wasn't bad at all. So. Overall, that part, like, eh, it was like really mostly a um, an experience. So, yeah, that's where I'm at with that. So, we got 25 seconds left on this raid, and there's like a minute left before Spotlight Hour is over. So, we're going to do this raid real quick, and then, yeah, we're going to call it a wrap after that. So, we can, and then... This is gonna be a part of my rent video that I'm gonna do like probably in a week from now. So what's gonna happen is this. Um, I'm gonna talk about some of the things that need to be improved with the game. And this is one of them. If you're in the raid lobby by yourself, even though they got the ready button now in the game and available for everybody, you cannot hit the button 
by it being there by yourself. It's stupid. I don't understand it. You have to be in there with at least one other person in order for you to hit that radio button. It is extremely strange. So I don't know what's up with that. But nevertheless, we got this Esprit done, and I still need this shiny because I do not have this shiny at all. So. Let's see if we get the shiny right here. It is windy as heck. 866 CP. Let's see what we got here. And the toe. Let's see. Final strike. Quick, I'm not doing the jingle. Let's see it. Is it shiny? No. It's still not shiny. Boo hits his. And as you saw, I did get that master ball. I got that in a previous video. I don't remember what video it was, but it was in a previous video. I think it was my community day video. So we got the master ball. And we caught the Esper, and it would be also my community day video. I did do an Esper raid. We did get a hundo. This is not even close to that. So there's that. Let's see this room in this gym real quick. And no, there's not. I'm going to call it a wrap. So with all that said, y'all know what this is. This is boy New Jack Gatsby, a.k.a. New Stephen A. Smith, saying peace out, y'all, and I'll see y'all next time. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Mr. After you subscribe to the channel, make sure you click the bell icon so you never miss a new video or a live stream ever again. Thanks, guys. Lewis the trainer, articulating paint. With my tongue, I done things that people said I can't. Yeah, they rank them with the elite. But it's for the people and victory is part of the feat. Cause when you get back on your feet, then you try again. Learn from mistakes. Show them that I got what it takes and I'm dying to win. Okay. I'm a hit and move away. 